few episodes ago, I covered declarative authorization, which is a really excellent authorization plugin for Rails. However, I find it to be a little bit heavy for some simple sites. So I set out to look for some alternative authorization solutions, and I didn't really find anything that really fit what I was looking for, so I decided to create my own. And that is CanCan. This is a simple authorization plugin, and I really tried to keep things as minimal as I could as I tackle the problem of authorization. And let's dive in and just see how this works in this episode. We'll be working with the same basic application here, which is a blog application, which has many different articles, and a given article has different comments. Now notice I can edit, destroy, and update articles and comments uh, even though I'm just not logged in, I'm just an everyday user. And we don't want that. We want to restrict access on what a user can do through authorization. Now notice I al already have some authentication built in. I have sign up and login forms. And I did this through AuthLogic. So really you can use any kind of authentication solution you want and it'll work with this kind of authorization. Work with CanCan. However, notice I did add some has many roles many-to-many uh, -many association between user and roles, so you can select which roles you want to assign a given user to as you sign them up. So an admin can do everything, a moderator can edit comments, and an author can create new articles and update articles that they own. So that's the three different roles, and everyday users, they can create comments and update comments that they own. Now you can install CanCan as a gem, so I'll edit my environment config file here and just add a new line here for config gem CanCan. And then we can install that gem with rake gems install. Now if you installed CanCan before it hit 1.0, then just make sure to upgrade because there are some features I'll mention in this episode which are only available in this version. Now to use CanCan, you just have to create a new class called ability. I usually like to place it in my models directory. So we'll just call it ability.rb. And in here we'll create that class. And then you also need to include the CanCan ability module. And then all you have to do is just define an initialize method and the user object is what is passed into this initialize method. And then in here is where you define all of the abilities for each user type inside of this single class here. And you do this with a simple three letter word can. And that's really the heart of this plugin is that word. And this can method accepts two uh, arguments. The first one is the action that you wanna perform on uh, a model. And that is, let's, let's say read in this case. And then the second argument here is that model class or model type that you want to perform that action on. In this case, we can pass the word all in here as a symbol, and that will accept all models and define the readability on all models. So if we just leave it like this, that means every kind of user who comes to our site, no matter what role they are in, will just be able to read models. They will not be able to uh, update or destroy models. Now, if I browse to our application, notice I still have the ability to edit and destroy articles and comments. And that's just because while we defined our abilities to only just read everything, we haven't actually put that into action yet. So inside of our view file here, we need to hide these edit and destroy links if the user is not able to access them. So to do that, we can use another method called can, but this one has a question mark in it. And it also takes two arguments. So the can method we defined in our ability class is used to define abilities. And this one here is used to access those abilities. So all we have to do is just pass in again two arguments here. One is the action you want to perform, in this case, update. And then the other one is the model you want to perform it on, in this case, article. And then it will check the user's current abilities and see if they're able to update the article, that given article. And then if they aren't, then it will return false, and then we won't be able to see that edit link. So now I just use this can method on every other link I have in the view that manages articles or comments. So let me do that real quick here with just a snap of my fingers. And there we go, and that, that looks better. So now the user can only see the links if they're able to manage them. So now if we come back to our view here and reload, voila, those edit and destroy links have been removed because 
every user just has the ability to read a models and not access them. However, this only hit the links. I'm still able to access the controller actions and update or modify articles as much as I want if I know the URL. So it's really not putting any kind of security into our application yet. So this means not only will we need to restrict the view layer, we also need to add some restrictions to our controller as well so that they are not able to access the actions which they are not, they don't have the ability to. So to do that with CanCan, one way is to call an authorized. This will raise an exception if I can spell it correctly. And then we only want to do this if they are not able to edit this article, for example. So uh, we can say, we can use the can method in here just like we did in the view layer. And we also have access to the cannot method, which is just a convenient way to do the opposite check. And so we should say report them as unauthorized if they cannot update the article. So now when I reload the view here, well, it says can can access denied exception was raised. You are not able to access this page. So it successfully restricted them from accessing this edit action when they don't have the ability to. So this means we'll need to specify unauthorized access for every single controller action in our application. And that can be a little bit tedious to do. So instead, if you're using like a RESTful style controller, then there's this method you can use called load and authorize resource and just call it at the top of your RESTful controller. And that will actually load the resource and authorize it in a before filter. So it sets up a before filter for you. And this means that these, where you're setting an instance variable here, are, that is no longer necessary, so it's no longer to necessary to set that article instance variable in the controller because it will properly detect the type of action and fetch it for you. So if we try reloading again here, we still get access denied. And let's try creating a new article, for example. We get access denied for that as well. So it's properly adding restrictions for us because we're only allowed to read articles. So we'll want to apply the same thing to our comments controller as well to add some authorization here. And then if this was a nested resource, like a nested resource in the routes, maybe under the articles model, then I could add a nested call here and say it's nested under the article resource. And that way it will load the comments through the article resource. But I'm not using nesting here, so I won't, but I just wanted to show you that. And, um, so that means we are loading our comments so we don't have to set the instance variable here in each of our actions anymore. Okay, now that our application is tight and secure, we can get to the fun part, which is defining abilities because we want to change the abilities depending on the user's roles and what they're logged in as. And this takes us back to our ability class where we specify the ability for our current user. So we can specify whatever we want in here and it will be reflected instantly throughout all of our applications. So it's a nice central location to put and define your abilities. Now notice I'm passing in the current user object each time here so that we can change the abilities based on the currently logged in user. So what we wanna do is let's say we want to allow the administrator user to manage everything. And to do that, we can say if user and really because we're acting just on the user object directly, this is completely decoupled from however you want to define your roles. So for example, you might just have an admin Boolean field inside of your user model, and then that would you know, change the behavior of the roles through that. But in this case, we have um, a user can have many roles, and so I'm going to have a little role method which can check if the user has the admin role assigned to it, and if they do, let's just change the behavior of this so that we want to say can manage all. Now manage is another special keyword here, and that just means they're able to perform every kind of action. Manage just encompasses every action. Now we still need to set up this role method instead of our user model, so let's do that. Now I've set up the user's roles here like I showed in episode 189, but really 
It doesn't matter how you set them up, just as long as you're able to access and check if a given user has a given role. So in this case, we'll see if they have a given role. And uh, to do this, let's just check if roles include role to string. There we go. Now there's one more thing we need to fix back in this ability class, and that is notice we're calling this role method on user object, but if the user is not logged in at all and doesn't have an account yet, then they won't have a user object passed into here. It'll just be nil. It'll just be set to nil. So what we need to do is we can uh, check for this case every time we check for the user's role, but I like to just set up a guest account or guest user record basically in that case. So in this, we'll just set user.new and just set the user instance variable to this if it's not set already. So this represents a guest user that just comes to the site and who doesn't have an account yet. So this way we're able to call methods like user.role on here even though they don't have an account set up yet. So since I'm still logged in as a guest, I reload here, nothing changes. I'm still not able to edit or destroy comments or articles, but if I log in as an admin, I've already set up an account with the admin role. Log in as that. Now notice when I go to the articles, I'm able to edit and destroy them just like I want. So I'm able to uh, change the behavior depending on my current logged in status. Okay, so we've defined the abilities for the administrator, which they can do everything. Now we have to define the other roles. So first of all, what should everyday users be able to do? Well, we want them to be able to create comments. So for the second argument here to, to can, we can pass in the comment model class, and this will give them that ability. Now we also want them to update comments which they own. So can update comment, but not all comments, just ones that they own. So to do that, you can pass in a block to this can method, and that will pass in the actual instance of the model that you're performing the check on, and then you just return true or false depending on if they're able to perform that ability. So in this case, we want to check if the comment user matches the current user. And now something to be aware of is that this has a possibility of the comment object being passed in here is nil, and that is if a comment object isn't passed when you do this update check. So to handle that possibility, you can either check for the presence of comment before performing the, the check, or you can use the try method that Rails provides, and that way, even if it's a nil object, it won't raise an exception, it'll just return nil um, if it doesn't respond to the user method. So it tries user, and then it will properly compare it, even if this comment is nil. Okay, so let's say I'm logged in as an everyday user here. I submit a comment here. Click Submit, and I'm able to create comments, and notice I have an edit link because I own this comment, so I'm able to edit comments as well. So now we've got everyday users handled. Let's try moderator roles. Well, we want moderators to update any comments that they own. So to do that, we can just add a simple uh, an extra conditional check in here to see if the user is either they own the comment or they are a moderator. So see if the role matches moderator. And then if it does, then they will be able to update comments as well. So if we try logging in as a moderator and then access a page with comments, notice we can edit both comments. Okay, so we have one more role left and that is author. So authors should be able to create articles and then update articles which they own. So to do that, we just have to check if the user's role is an author, and then if it is, they can uh, create articles and can update articles, but only articles which they own. In this case, is very similar to our comments. We'll see if the user object equals the current user. And there we go. Now we have the abilities defined for every kind of role that we provide in our application. And the nice thing is we are able to define all of the abilities in one location and the rest of our application reflected those changes depending on the user's and model's attributes. Now, if a user does somehow call an action, a controller action, which he isn't allowed to access, then he gets this ugly access denied exception. 
and it would just be an error page, a 500 error page on our application. So it would be nice if we could pretty this up a bit. And Rails actually provides a nice method for doing this called rescue from, and you could just place this inside your application controller and then just specify the exception you want to rescue from, and then you can either specify the name of a method to call or just pass a block into here. In this case, we'll just use a block because it's a little simple behavior, and then we'll just say access denied, and then uh, redirect to the root. And there we go. And now if we reload this page, well, it takes us back to our home page with the access denied error, so just like we want. And that's it for this episode. I hope you find CanCan -can useful, and be sure to leave some feedback, maybe add some issues if you find any problems with it, or have some suggestions of feature changes.